Hello, and welcome to Killer Queens, a true crime podcast. I'm your host, Torella. And I'm your better, prettier, younger host, Tori. We're sisters who are obsessed with true crime and love gal palin with you about cases. You can expect the occasional curse word, lots of friends quotes, and all the 90s nostalgia. To get in on the conversation, check us out at KillerQueensPodcast.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Killer Queens Podcast, And we're on YouTube at Killer Queens, a true crime podcast. Okay, y'all, grab your Capri Suns or your Surge and let's talk about some true crime. Hey, you guys, welcome back to Killer Queens. All right, so if you haven't been here before, I'm Torella. And I'm Tori. And we're going to guide you through the shit show that is the death of Kendrick Johnson. It's so sad. Yeah. I mean, the investigation is the shit show. That's right. That's the what death I mean. is not. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really, it's really wild. And I think it's one of those cases where you're like, investigation who? Right. Yeah. Like, we need to look up that word and share it with people because maybe they didn't know that that's what they were supposed to be doing. <laughs> right. Like maybe they thought it was opposite day or something. I don't know. Oh God, was it opposite day? We need to look it back up. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Go back and trace check it. the schedule. Yes. For sure. Before we jump into the case, we do just want to remind you guys that we have a Patreon and Patreon is a website where you can donate uh, or like pledge to creators. There's all kinds of people on there, not just podcasters, but you know, you can throw a few bones and usually get some perks for it. But we have got, I mean, I'm not even tooting our own horn. We've got like one of the best Patreons out there. Yes. And we have heard that from multiple people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, you that's get, true. Yeah. For $10 a month, you can get three full episodes a week. And we do two live streams a week. I mean, we we put out a lot of freaking content. So I'm pretty proud of it. We work hard and we're so appreciative of everybody that supports us on there. And every episode on there is ad-free no matter what level you join at. So, you know, it's our hope that one day we don't need sponsors to make this work. You know, we can just make it work on Patreon. So if you uh, donate there and that's just $3 a month, no ads anymore. Yes. And $10 gets you, $10 and up gets you the three full episodes a week. Yep. Yeah. So, and you get one bonus episode a month at $3. So you do still get a a bonus episode there as well. Yes. But, you know, check it out. See if it's something you're interested in. And uh, we hope to see you there. Do some cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you to Nicole Pierce, Taylor LeMaster, Hillary, Desiree, Emily Butler, and Verity for requesting this case. Yes. And thank you so much to Madison for doing the research on this case. Yes. Thank you. Hey, girls. Thanks. Also, I did forget to mention when we talked about the Patreon that you should follow us on Instagram and Facebook because that's where we're doing our lives. So we do the live stream every week on Instagram. And in our Facebook group, which is Killer Queens podcast case discussion group, it's the free one. So uh, if you want to be part of those lives, definitely follow us there. Yes. And we do the lives on Instagram in our regular group every Thursday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Yes. So come hang out with us. Yeah. And we always encourage... If you feel so inclined to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you can leave reviews, we always love to get them. We love to see them and we appreciate your kind words or any words that you have to say. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We would love to get your POV on the whole sitch, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we've done enough of that, right? We can move on. I think so. Let's, yeah. Enough of the business. (laughs) All right. On Thursday, January 10th, 2013, 17-year-old Kendrick Johnson never returned home after a day of school. The following day, his body was found wedged in the middle of a large wrestling mat in the corner of his Valdosta, Georgia high school's gym. Kendrick's death was ruled a tragic accident and the investigation was closed after four months. However, the Johnson family was adamant that their son was the victim of foul play and his death was being covered up by law enforcement and school officials. Was Kendrick Johnson murdered by other students at school, or did he fall into the mat while trying to retrieve his shoes, causing him to suffocate to death? Ugh. Gosh, this is so sad. 
Yeah. So let's start by getting into who Kendrick Johnson was. Kendrick Lamar Johnson was born on October 10th, 1995 to Kenneth Johnson and Jacqueline Jackie Johnson in Lowndes County, Georgia. Kendrick, affectionately known to his friends and family as KJ, was the youngest child of four in the Johnson family. His father was a long haul truck driver and his mother was a school bus driver. Kendrick was quiet and smart and his family said that he was really good with numbers. That, I can't relate to that, (laughs) but I think it's awesome that he had so many amazing qualities and he saved most of his money and kept it hidden away in his room. So really good with numbers, but also probably a really good investor, really good saver. And at such a young age, that's really impressive. So impressive. At the time of his death, Kendrick was 17 years old and a junior at Lowndes High School. And he was very involved in athletics and had participated in his high school's football team, basketball, and track teams. There isn't very much public information about Kendrick's personal life, but it's clear from his family that he was a young man with a very bright future. Yes. So let's get to the day in question. On Thursday, January 10th, 2013, students had just returned back to school at Lowndes High School after Christmas break the previous day. That is so like, it's just like the day you come back. I don't know. Mm -hmm. God, that's crazy. Yeah. The high school had two gyms on its campus. So one that was referred to as the old gym and one that was referred to as the new gym. In the far corner of the old gym, there were several large wrestling mats stored, and most of these mats were stored rolled and upright. And I've seen this, Mm -hmm. you know, before. So if you need a visual, there are so many pictures online about this case. You can see the mats rolled up. They're pretty big mats, though. Like, even rolled up, they're huge. Mm -hmm. They're about six feet tall and approximately three feet wide. Many students, including Kendrick, use these mats to store items on top of or possibly inside of to avoid paying the school's locker fees. I didn't know that was a thing, I guess. Well, I do remember we had to pay. It was like $3 to get a lock. Oh, you're right. Could we use our own locks or not? I think we could. Okay, so you either had to buy one of their locks or... Yeah, bring your own. Bring your own, which... I mean, I get paying for the lock. You're going to pay for the lock either way. Mm -hmm. But a locker fee? Yeah, I've never heard of a locker fee. That's insane. There were gym lockers available to use at the school, but some students couldn't afford the fee. The student who shared the shoes with Kendrick said that after they finished using the shoes, they would go to the mats, jump up, and toss the shoes in the middle of the hole. During Christmas break, several more wrestling mats were added to the grouping, which left their mat in the middle. Around 1.30 p.m., surveillance videos in the corner of the old gym captured Kendrick walking in and towards the area of the wrestling mats. There were four other students playing basketball on the half court at the time. The court they were playing on looked to be the furthest side from the gym mats. There's no more known video footage of Kendrick after this. He was marked absent from his next class, which was weightlifting. Kendrick's mother expected him home later that evening following a school basketball game, but he never returned home. And he was supposed to be meeting friends at this basketball game, which, of course, he did not go to. So his friends were like, WTF, like, where did you go? Yes. So he's definitely missing some events. Jackie reported her son missing around midnight that night. The following morning, January 11th, Jackie went to the high school to let them know that her son was missing. The staff at the school helped her print out missing persons flyers. Jackie was obviously very worried, especially considering how out of character this was for her son. Kendrick was a good kid and he didn't just disappear. Around 10.30 a.m., a group of students entered the old gym to begin their class. The students were reportedly filling out surveys while sitting on the bleachers by the wrestling mats, and a student like looked up and sees a pair of white-socked feet sticking out from one of the mats. And initially they thought it was a prank, but when they stood up on the bleachers, they could see a body. Mm. The school's gym coach, Philip Peplo, immediately tipped the mat over while a student called 911. When he got the mat to the floor and attempted to pull the body out, he saw that the person was obviously deceased. There was blood and vomit on the floor and the person's face was extremely swollen. There was also a strong smell of decomposition. Mr. Peeplo didn't believe that there was anything that could be done for this person, so he left him inside the mat and quickly moved all the students out. When law enforcement and medical personnel arrived on the scene, the school was immediately locked down. 
His mother was informed that a body had been found in the gym, and it was quickly discovered that the body found lifeless in the mat was her son, Kendrick Johnson. Oh, my God. What are the, like, that she was there when they found them? Oh, I know. Or found him. Like, that's insane timing. Well, and can you imagine that being the way that you find out what happened to your son? So sad. It's so sad. All right, guys. We're going to talk about periods for a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're not my favorite at all. Mm-mm. But when I have to deal with surfing the crimson wave, I need something that's going to be long lasting, easy to use, and something that I feel comfortable in. If you want a period product that looks out for your body, your lifestyle, and the planet, you've got to try Flex. Flex is innovating period care with products that are body safe, made for comfort, and made to keep you moving. There's the Flex Disc, which is a one-time use menstrual disc that fits perfectly inside your body. One Flex Disc can be worn up to 12 hours and holds as much flow as three super tampons. It's not a cup, it's way better than a tampon, and it's unlike any other period product you've ever seen before. And if you want to go zero waste and have the planet love you even more, pick up the Flex Cup, a reusable menstrual cup that Cosmo rated number one. And with helpful videos, in-depth diagrams, gifts, and Flex spurts available to walk you through the entire process, you'll never go back to products from the past once you try Flex. So say goodbye to cramps, put sex back on the table, and lend Mother Nature a hand. Go to flexfits.com slash queens and use code queens for 20% off. And use code queens for 20% off Flex Disc Starter Kits or 10% off your first Flex Cup. Plus, free U.S. shipping. That's so many things that you get. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's code queens at flex, so that's F-L-E-X, like my muscles, fits.com slash queens. I'm very strong. (laughs) <laughs> so let's get on to the investigation um, in question. Mm-hmm. The police immediately began their investigation into what happened to Kendrick. There were two cameras in the old gym, both which captured Kendrick entering the gym and walking towards the gym mats. Unfortunately, there were no cameras pointed towards the area where the mats were. There was no footage showing Kendrick leaving the gym. Police began interviewing students, particularly focusing on those who had been in the old gym within the last 24 hours. They weren't able to gain much information, except that no one recalled seeing anyone in distress or hearing anyone calling for help. No one recalled seeing Kendrick at the basketball game that he was supposed to attend the prior evening. Investigators made a video of the scene, capturing everything prior to Kendrick's body being moved. Nothing appeared to be out of the ordinary in the gym until police approached the corner with the wrestling mats. Several were tipped over, reportedly by students and the coaches they attempted to reach Kendrick. Near the mats, they found a yellow school folder and a physical science textbook that belonged to Kendrick. Just hearing the words physical science textbook just brings me right back to high school. Yeah. But I feel like it's those little things that they found that really drive home how young he was. and Yeah, how young he was. And when you watch the surveillance footage, you see him carrying that yellow notebook. Mm-hmm. It's plain as day that it's yellow. It's just so, it's I don't eerie. know. Yeah, it like, is. Yeah. In the wrestling mat, Kendrick had been wedged upside down. The sneakers that he'd been wearing were off of his feet and beside his legs in the mat. The sneakers that he shared with his friend that were often stored in the mat were on the floor at the bottom of the mat. There was a small pool of blood on the floor beneath the mat where he had been, where it had been standing with one of the shoes on top. The shoe did not have any blood on top of it. Other reported findings on the scene included another sneaker nearby the bleachers that had red spots on it, a sweatshirt with a small red stain on it, red spots on a nearby wall, and bloody tissues in the girls' locker room. The spare shoe and sweatshirt were reportedly never tested nor taken into evidence. The red spots on the wall appeared to be old, and it was reportedly tested and found not to be Kendrick's. The bloody tissues in the girls' bathroom were tested and found not to be Kendrick's blood. A female from one of the school's sports teams said that the tissues were hers from a recent bloody nose. Approximately six hours after the discovery of Kendrick's body, the coroner was finally called. Six hours. Six hours. Six hours after he was found. What you doing in there for six hours, dudes? Yeah. Sheriff Chris Prine said that coroners are required to declare the cause of death as soon as possible. Prine said that their reason for delay was that the coroner wouldn't have been able to access the body until investigators had finished processing the entire scene. I'm sorry, So it took the investigators six hours to process the scene, yet they really didn't do a whole lot. 
Yeah, it took him six hours to look at everything and be like, well, we don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. Okay, bye. What is that about? Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Does the coroner, they're not allowed to do what they need to do until they just have to go up to the body and pronounce it dead, right? Mm, I would think so. I would also think that it would be probably pretty important to the investigation and possibly a trial if that was ever to come to fruition that the coroner would be there and be there pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Six hours, a lot can happen to a body. Yeah, and I don't understand. I've never heard that the coroner can't come do what they have to do until they've completely closed the scene out. Yeah, unless it's like one of those dick swinging competitions where it's like, well, we don't, you know, you can't come in here until we're all done. Yeah, and I heard that the coroner was like, his office was right down the street from that school. He could have fucking walked there probably. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they didn't call him, but he started hearing rumors that they had found a dead body at the school. And Mm -hmm. he's like, that's weird. Why are they not calling me if there is one there? Yeah, that's how he found out. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh my God. Yeah, so... Prine also insisted that no law enforcement touched the body until the coroner was able to examine it. However, there are crime scene photos that show the photographer's shoes not covered in protective booties that are usually worn in crime scenes in order not to contaminate the area. And in his initial report, the coroner wrote that the scene had been compromised and that there was no cooperation from law enforcement on the scene. Hmm. Why? He also said that the body itself was compromised on January 13th when the sealed body bag was opened to show the body to his father. I mean, that's sad though, because they, he really wanted to see his son's body and they were like, no, well, too late, you know, whatever. And so they finally opened it, but that's a tough one to to say because (laughs) you want to follow protocol, but you also don't want to shut a parent out of seeing their child for the last time. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's like, rules versus having a sense of humanity and heart, right? I mean, right. I don't know. Exactly. On January 14th, Dr. Mary Ann Gaffney Craft, that's a hell of a name, conducted the autopsy on Kendrick's body at the GBI State Crime Lab in Macon, Georgia. And that's Georgia Bureau of Investigation. In the report, she noted congestive decomposition, changes of the head, neck, torso, and upper extremities, and no injuries other than superficial abrasions on the right wrist and the left distal fourth finger. Her ultimate ruling for cause of death was positional asphyxia, and the manner of death was accidental. Investigators believed that Kendrick went to the gym on Thursday afternoon to collect his gym shoes for his weightlifting class. When he arrived, he found that the mat they were in were surrounded by new ones. And instead of being able to tip the mat over to grab his shoes, Kendrick was forced to climb on top of the mats. It would have been difficult and time-consuming for him to move all the new mats out of the way. So when Kendrick reached down to grab his shoes, they had fallen further down. As he reached one arm, as he reached with one arm, he held himself up with the other one. Police believed his arm either slipped from the top of the mat or he found himself too constricted to be able to pull himself back up. As he slid further into the mat, he struggled more, which caused his sneakers to fall off. Though the hole in the center of the mats was smaller than the width of Kendrick's shoulders, the mats were soft and likely had some give as he slid down. Once Kendrick was fully inside of the mat, he would have been unable to get out. The mats were six feet tall and Kendrick was about 5'10". The hole was constricting Kendrick's movement, including his ability to take a full breath. Eventually, he would have been unable to breathe and suffocated. The blood found on the floor had likely come from Kendrick's nose and mouth as his body's blood pooled in his head and upper torso. It likely dripped from his face onto his arms and onto the floor, which would explain why there was no blood on the top of the shoe found on the floor by his head. It is believed that he was inside of the mat for about 21 hours. Mm, Golly. The day after Kendrick's body was found, his family reached out to Reverend Floyd Rose of the Valdosta Southern Christian Leadership Conference and asked him to run an independent investigation into Kendrick's death. He agreed and began working with the family as well as the NAACP and a member of their legal team, Lee Touchton. The family and friends of Kendrick Johnson held multiple rallies and marches protesting the declaration that Kendrick's death was accidental. They felt strongly that he had been murdered. In April, during a public rally at the Lowndes County Courthouse, several family members held hands and blocked the entrance to the courthouse. 
This resulted in their arrests. Reverend Rose reportedly put up his own house as collateral to bail Jackie Johnson out of jail. Wow. I know. That's like really rallying around the community, you know, like. Right. It's amazing. In June, with the help of Reverend Rose and the NAACP, the Johnsons were granted permission to exhume their son's body for a second autopsy performed by a private pathologist, Dr. William Anderson. During this autopsy, it was discovered that Kendrick's body had been stuffed with newspaper. This was a very shocking, I don't know the right word, off-putting's not right. It really affected me when I heard this. And I heard that, okay, so it's poor practice, right? I mean, it's a very outdated procedure. Yeah. Stuffing bodies with newspaper after removing the organs is not illegal. And apparently it was done a lot of times in like the 70s. Yeah. Just to get the shape of the body for the burial. Right, because they the organs have been removed at that point. So yes, I have heard because I have a friend who she went to mortuary school. She didn't complete it. But she went and she talked about filling bodies with sawdust. That's, yeah, sawdust. Yeah. And there's some other kind of... Like cotton material. Yes, material that they will do. And it's because without the organs inside the body, sometimes it can get like a little misshapen. So they're just trying to like fill it back out, basically. Yes, for the funeral mm-hmm. services. Because if you have an open casket, it's very alarming to see a body that doesn't look like the way you remember them. The Johnsons eventually sued the funeral home for this. They alleged that the funeral company destroyed their son's organs as a part of a cover-up. Dr. Anderson's autopsy concluded that Kendrick's cause of death was blunt force trauma. He observed a small discoloration on the side of his neck and said that this was consistent with a non-accidental death. It's also noted on the responding paramedic crew's report that they noticed a small bruise in the same area. Dr. Anderson said that his findings were not consistent with death from positional asphyxia. With this finding, the Johnsons, along with the help of the NAACP and the SCLC, felt even more confident that Kendrick was the victim of foul play. Four months after Kendrick's death, the Valdosta police closed his death investigation, ruling it a tragic accident. Mm, Okay. So there are rumors, there are theories, there's, you know, conspiracy theories like all over the place in this case. Yes. Um, And we'll go through some of that. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, I sometimes, I feel like conspiracy theories is kind of like one of those, uh, what's the right word? Like it's one of those charged words that you're like, oh, it kind of doesn't have a great connotation to it Mm -hmm. uh, or phrases. And I just feel like I can understand with a case like this because there's so many questions and so many, it's, it could be, it's tragic for sure, but it is just so crazy the, what we know about it yeah, and what we don't know about it. So I can understand why there are so many rumors and theories. Right. Yeah. That gives you that kind of room to start to wonder and let your imagination go because you're trying to piece it together. Rose is back. Whoop, 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 whoop. Beow, beow, beow. Raise the roof. I know. I think it's pretty safe to say that we cannot shut up about how much we love pros. Mm-mm. For my hair specifically, I always want something that will make my hair shiny, soft, and keeps the texture looking healthy. I love cotton candy colors, but I don't want my hair to feel like cotton candy. You know what I'm saying? I know. And pros has got its work cut out for it here. Oh, okay. Let's, let's not. Okay. Well, it, you know, it could be better. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to move along. Pros knows that there is more to you than just your hair type. Pros has given over 1 million consultations with their in-depth hair quiz, which is how I got started. The quiz was easy. It was super thorough. They asked questions I didn't even know would be pertinent, but apparently they are. By analyzing over 85 personal factors, Pros determines a unique blend of ingredients to treat your exact concerns. As a carbon neutral certified B Corp, Pros is the industry leader in clean and responsible beauty. All their ingredients are sustainably sourced, ethically gathered, and cruelty-free. They're also the first custom beauty brand to go carbon neutral. If you're not 100% positive Pros is the best hair care you've ever had, they'll take the products back, no questions asked. And they even made Tori's hair look amazing. I know. Who would have thought? I know. Pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash queens. That's pros, P-R-O-S-E dot com slash queens for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. 
HelloFresh is back. Yay! You guys, we love HelloFresh so much. It cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips, which are undoubtedly two of my least favorite things. So you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or less. You don't have to spend hours a week pouring over recipes to meal plan. You don't have to buy ingredients you're not going to use. You're not going to waste stuff. HelloFresh's high quality fresh ingredients are sourced directly from growers and delivered from the farm to your front door in under a week. Contact free, of course. Of course. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your order on the app within minutes. Easily change your delivery day, food preferences, plan size, or skip a week whenever you need. It's seriously so easy. So I personally have never really had an issue with what they send out. Mm -mm. But the thing is, even if I looked at a week and was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to love that. If I try it, I end up licking my plate clean. Like, seriously. It, I'm, yeah, I'm not even kidding 100%. Like, the meals that I'm like, uh, I don't know. Because, you know, you look at something, you're like, I'm not sure if I'm going to like that. <laughs> we have, like, fought over who gets the leftovers. Absolutely. It's that good. Yeah. So go to HelloFresh.com slash KillerQueens14 and use code KillerQueens14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash KillerQueens14 and use code KillerQueens14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. It don't get better than that. Though the police felt that there were no unanswered questions left about Kendrick's death, his family continued their own investigation. They believe that Kendrick was attacked by several boys at the school gym, beaten to death, and then rolled up in the mat. The two boys believed to be behind it were brothers Brian and Brandon Bell. Both boys were involved in athletics at Lowndes High School and knew Kendrick well. Kendrick's father said that the younger brother, Brian, got into a small fight with Kendrick while being bused to a football game over a year ago. Despite this, friends of the two reported that Kendrick and Brian quickly reconciled and were good friends and had even recently worked on a partner project together uh, voluntarily in science. So they didn't get stuck with each other. They said, hey, do you want to be partner? Mm -hmm. They're obviously not that mad. Like you'd find any other partner if you were just like, I'm done with this person. Oh, absolutely. And I feel like high school fights, they run deep. Yes. Yes, they do. Brian, though, had a solid alibi. Surveillance cameras, his teacher, and his classmates confirmed that he was in class in a different area of the school when Kendrick entered the gym. His older brother, Brandon, was en route to a school wrestling match on a school bus with the rest of his teammates and coaches. There's been quite a bit of, there's been quite a bit of controversy surrounding Brandon's alibi. Prior to the wrestling trip, his coach filled out a form stating that the team would be departing at 4 p.m. So if that's true, then Brandon would have been on campus when this happened. He would not have been on a on a trip. Mm-hmm. But when his coach was asked about it, he said, oh, I messed up the form. The tournament started at, at 4. We would have to leave well before that. But I just thought it meant, you know, what time are you going? What time mm-hmm. do you need it by? So there's a little bit of... There's some discrepancies. Confusion. Yeah, about that. Yeah. It is confirmed that the wrestling team attended the school's first lunch session from 11.32 a.m. to 12.02 p.m. The team and the coaches then boarded a bus to head to Macon, Georgia, which is about 150 miles away from Lowndes High. The coaches' cell phone records indicate that the team was at least... 85 miles north of the school at 1.53 p.m. So they left at least an hour before that. Well, yeah, and if the coach is with the team, which I would imagine so, and Brandon was at that wrestling match. Like, he was definitely with the team. Yes, yeah, everybody saw, like, parents, friends, teachers, like, everybody saw him there. Yes. Yeah. In a video released to the family, it shows Kendrick waiting in line for lunch in the school's cafeteria. The Johnson family's attorney says the video shows another student in line that was part of the wrestling team, but that has not been confirmed. In addition to the Johnsons questioning the Bell brothers' alibis, they also felt it was extremely suspicious that their father, Rick Bell, was an FBI agent. So they believed that he aided in the cover-up of their son's murder. While over 100 students were interviewed and cooperated with police in their investigation, the Bell brothers were reported to be the only students who refused to talk to police. 
And Rick Bell referred the police to his family attorney who told them the boys wouldn't be speaking to them. You know, everything's going to go through this man. Well, and okay. So we have talked about this kind of thing multiple times. When you are being approached by police and we say like, oh, it's really suspicious when somebody lawyers up. But then we're also like, but you should always lawyer up. I don't blame, because if the dad is familiar with law in the justice system. This is exactly the person that even if, not even even if, especially if you have nothing to do with whatever you're being questioned on, you better lawyer up. Mm-hmm. Like you just can't take any chances. Always, with that. yeah, always, because there is just so many ways that you who had nothing to do with it, and I'm not saying they didn't or they did. I don't know, but if you have nothing to do with something, they just are waiting for you to make a mistake, one inconsistency, yeah. and then they've got you. One little slip up, yeah, and. I can understand from both sides of this being on, let's say, the Bell's side, the dad being like, oh, absolutely not. You're not talking to them. We're going to go through an attorney. I could see it from the Johnson family side. Why would they not cooperate? Oh, absolutely. They have nothing to do with it. Yeah, you're not cooperating. And I think it should be said, too, that, that speaking, giving statements through an attorney is still cooperating. Mm-hmm. It's... Not as freely, right? The police don't get you for as long as they want you. They don't get to do all their tactics that they use to get confessions and stuff. Yeah. But it's not necessarily that you're just not saying anything. It's just, you can talk to me with my attorney present, or you can get statements from me through my attorney or whatever. But Mm -hmm. I think just it's widely, you know, believed and felt that Somebody who gets a lawyer is guilty because that makes them look guilty because why does an innocent person need a lawyer? Right. And I used to be right in that same camp. Like, you know, before we started doing this, I felt the same way. If you didn't do anything wrong, you don't need a lawyer. Mm -hmm. But I I almost feel like, I mean, especially if you didn't do anything wrong, you need a lawyer. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Everything about the way that I used to look at crime versus now has completely changed. Oh my gosh. Yes. So much. So, but here's the thing. The Bell brothers were never considered suspects by police. They, I think one of them ends up being named as a person of interest. They've never been listed as suspects. And the thing is though, there is no concrete evidence. This is only circumstantial and it's only based on, and I can understand it, you know, the parents are trying to, they're grasping for anything for this to make sense. Yeah. And if it works, I I believe it. But the only reason why they are, one of them has been named or if they were named as a suspect or a person of interest, not suspect, person of interest, is because the dad was like, well, they had a fight one time. Yes. Yeah. And apparently the fight that they said that they had was like a year prior to that. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, okay, they're not tight anymore. Like they don't hang out all the time anymore, but they're still super friendly. Yeah. They're cool. They don't have any problems with each other. Remember, they had just done a science project together voluntarily. They w- didn't get stuck with each other and weren't like, man, I don't want to do this with this guy. I hate him. You know, it was like, sure, it was not like that. So literally, if all you have is that these two high school kids had beef with each other about whatever it may be, and they've supposedly squashed it now, do some people hold on to that? Yeah. Do some people do crazy stuff and wait a year and kill somebody? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Like there are people that do that, but we're talking about high school kids and the likelihood is that they're all going to get in fights with their friends at some point. Yeah. And they're all probably going to let it go. And the fact that that paired with the fact that both brothers, Brian and Brandon, had pretty good alibis. I mean, the wrestling match is kind of Kind of sketchy because of the timeline, but you do have evidence of the teacher's cell phone. Exactly, yeah. We know the teacher didn't leave that day. He didn't take a half day off, come back, pick the kids up, and go to the right. tournament. Right. It should be easy enough to to check. They're mm-hmm. saying, well, that's the time that it started, not the time that we left. Okay, well, let's go back to somebody scheduled that game. Like My husband, Andrew, schedules all the like lacrosse leagues games here. He has paper trails of all that shit because it's very 
it gets very confusing because you're talking to 10, 20 different coaches. You're like, hey, here's the dates I have open. Which one do you want? Okay, I'll mark you on that one. Okay, which one do you want? Okay, now we'll do this one. Like you've got all these people, you know, emailing out 20 different coaches being like, hey, let's play your team and let's figure out a date. Mm -hmm. To schedule all that, you have to keep paper trails or you're gonna you're gonna tell somebody they have a game and they don't have a game. You're going to tell somebody they do when they don't, you know, like you've got to keep very, very good records of that shit. Why can we not go back and just be like, it started at four or right. because if it didn't start at four, if they left at four, it would have to start at what? Six, six thirty, seven. Mm-hmm. Was it an afternoon thing or was it an evening thing? Like, right, exactly. One hundred and fifty miles away from the high school. Yeah, like, that's and, gonna take some time to get there. And we found his body the next day. We didn't find his body a year later. We're not asking this question three years later. We're asking this question two days later. Which mm-hmm. is it? Yeah, we don't know because that doesn't work. There has to be a paper trail there. Yeah, I just I don't understand why there's not more information there. It's like. It's just one of those things that's just like, well, I mean, he said it started at four or they say that it started at four and he says, no, that's what time we were supposed to leave. I guess we'll never know. Right. And the thing is, I can understand why it's kind of sketchy because there is no concrete, like it happened then, he was definitely gone then. It kind of feels like a cover up in that way because people are... There's no evidence. You know, there's no there's no concrete facts about anything. It's like, well, we don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so frustrating because there's there is just a lot of we don't know and the problem is the way that they quote investigated which we'll get into, we might not ever know because once that's gone that's gone, but what you cannot do is publicly dox people and put them through this like public shame mm-hmm. when there is no evidence that they had anything to do with it. You well, get yeah. evidence, that's a different thing. But the thing about this case, well, any case that this happens in, once you put it out there that someone is a person of interest, then the media goes crazy and uh-huh. then it becomes a trial by media. And what happened with the with um, Brian was that he received a scholarship from Florida State University. They gave him a football scholarship, but they revoked it because Mm -hmm. of all this. Yeah, because he was... And the thing is, okay, look, I feel so, so bad for the Johnson family. Like my my heart goes out to them. Of course. I cannot imagine what they're going through. Mm -mm. I don't think that they're just going around being like, Maybe it was that guy, let's just ruin his life. I don't think they're doing that. I think that they legitimately believe that it was these boys because of the problems that they knew about that they'd had before. Like, you know, they're racking their brains. Who could have done this? Who would have a reason who didn't like him? This is who they say Kendrick had been telling them was bothering him. So, of course, that's where your mind's going to go. Like, it's them. And that's something that definitely needs to be investigated. But when they found out that um, Brian had gotten the scholarship, they contacted the school and said, hey, well, he's he's uh, under investigation for a murder. Right. Yeah. Which was not technically even true at the time. He wasn't under investigation. He was a person of interest, which just means they need to talk to you and figure things out more to clear you or charge you or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they did that with more than one opportunity that these kids had, they would contact these, you know, organizations or whatever and let them know that they're under suspicion of a murder and do you want that negative publicity at your school or whatever. Well, and I I can understand emotions are charged and very high. They have just lost their son who has no more chance for opportunities in his life. His life was cut tragically short and it is terrible. But at the same time, I think that it doesn't serve anyone to act rationally, you know, like in a rash way. Yeah. They should act rationally, but they, they, you know, to act off of emotions and to mess that up for, because without knowing, I mean, I could understand if, if it was 100% true. Mm-hmm. And nobody cared. And people were still just like, hey, come, here's a scholarship. Here's a million dollars. Here's all these amazing things that you can be a part of. 
I get that, but it seemed like it snowballed into this huge thing. And it's like, I get your feelings and I don't think that that should be discounted. But at the same time, that's not fair. Right. Yeah. It's not fair. Mm -mm. Two wrongs, you know, don't make a right. Yeah. Kind of thing, unfortunately. But three lefts do. Yeah, definitely. Just putting that out there. Throughout the years following Kendrick's death, the Johnson family filed multiple lawsuits against 40-plus defendants alleging that they'd been involved in the death and or the cover-up. In a 2015 deposition regarding one of these lawsuits, both Kendrick's mother and father admitted multiple times that they had no evidence to indicate that the Bell family was involved in their son's death. I mean, that's bad. Like... Yeah, I mean, they have no evidence. And again, my heart bleeds for them. I feel so awful, but you have no evidence yet you're kind of ruining their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so sad all the way around. But again, Mm -hmm. you know, that's just, that doesn't serve anything. Mm -mm. As the Johnsons continued to protest the police declaring their son's death an accident, they brought forward more of what they felt were inconsistencies. In an effort to grab attention with signs they held at protests and rallies, They posted large photos of Kendrick's face after his death. And I have seen this picture and it's very very, rough to see. It's very disturbing. But what what happened was they put this picture on all these posters and they say, okay, Sheriff, are you still saying it was an accident? Because they believe that Kendrick was beaten to death. And when you look at the photo and you see his face... And the way that it looks, and we're not going to post that photo anywhere. You can find it easily. I mean, that looks like you look at that and you're like, "Uh uh-uh, something happened here, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is that this picture wasn't taken after Kendrick had been pulled from the mat. It was after the autopsy. The photo was taken after the autopsy. So during the autopsy, they peel the skin back so that they can perform their exam. And that's why it looks so incredibly gruesome. Like, he also appeared to have some small abrasions. His face is super swollen. He had dried blood coming from his nose. Many people said that it looked like Kendrick had suffered head and face trauma And it's important to keep in mind that Kendrick was stuck upside down, which caused all the blood in his body to pool in his head and upper body. This would cause significant swelling and decomposition in that area, similar to someone who had hung themselves and had really swollen legs. So, you know, gravity, your body fluids are all going to go to the point that's, you know, gravity. So that's what's happening here. So his face is what is going to show all those things because that's it's where his blood went. Mm-hmm. And then you factor in the things that have to happen to a body after during autopsy because I think a lot of people also just did not even, you don't realize what somebody would look like if they were upside down in a mat for 21 hours. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's worse than what you think it would be. But a lot of people were pretty upset when they found out that those pictures were not from immediately when Kendrick was pulled from the mat that they were from after the autopsy. A lot of people, they, the Johnson family started to lose some support after that. So there are so many things that I'd love to go back in time and experience. Summer break with an actual break, just Mm. swimming all day. Oh my gosh, yes. I would go back to getting excited to turn on the TV and see TRL and Ah! if my favorite video was still on the countdown. I would love to go back and see my unrequited love at school all day long and never actually speaking to him. No, I mean, of course you can't talk to him. Well, maybe I'd call him and if he answered, I'd hang up real quick. I I don't know, but sure. I would love to go back to all those things. One thing that I do not want to go back to, though, is acne. No. No fun at all. Don't love it. But unfortunately, sometimes those pesky pimples come back from 2002 and they get me. And that's why apostrophe is amazing. 
Apostrophe, if you don't know, is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. All you do is fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and your medical history. You snap a couple selfies because you're beautiful Mm -hmm. and you send those to your dermatologist and then the dermatologist will create your customized treatment plan. Apostrophe treats acne, but they can also help you hit your other skincare goals like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even dark spots. So when I got my bottle from Apostrophe, I was so excited. It's it's a really, it's, all I got was one product to take care of all of the things that I needed to take care of, right? Because I want to get on top of maybe wrinkle care already, mm-hmm. but also keeping my skin, like all of the skin cells, I want to keep them turning over yep. to prevent the pimples that we were talking about. I got the bottle. It came with all these little stickers. So I decorated that little, that little guy. Isn't it's, not so cute? It's so cute. I put a little PM sticker because that's when I'm supposed to use it. So nighttime. It's just so cute. You can personalize it and make it your own completely. Exactly. And that way, yeah, like you said, it stands out. You remember to use it for sure. Mm -hmm. We have a special deal just for our audience too. So save $15 off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash queens when you use our code. Guess what it is? Queens. I was going to say queens. (laughs) This code is only available to our listeners, though. Nobody else is a queen like you are, okay? To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash queens and click begin visit. And then you use our code queens at sign up. And that's where you'll get your $15 off your dermatology visit. That's apostrophe, A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash queens. And use the code queens. You get your dermatology visit. You save $15. And we are so grateful to you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, Apostrophe. And thank you, Torella, for being a spelling bee queen, too. I know. it's All the spelling bee uh, trophies are coming in handy right now. Love it. I do think, though, that even if they used the pictures pulled straight from the mat and not had not given context that he had been in there for 21 hours, mm-hmm. that would still be a little misleading. Yes, I think so too. Because it's just, it would be horrific either way. Because yeah, if you didn't know the details of it, which again, there are a lot of details that we still don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't know the details of it, you would think, I mean, the the pictures look like he had been beaten very badly. But then knowing what we know, that Mm -hmm. it's gravity and blood pooling and swelling. Yeah. Swelling can do a lot of really horrific things to a human body, especially a face. And like, you know, there are medical conditions where people, you know, will get very swollen. Like I'm also thinking about our our cousin's daughter who was on in the hospital. Oh and I mean, she was, her organs were failing and, and all these things were happening and she didn't look like herself at all. Not even a little bit, no. It was scary to see somebody that you love and they don't look like them, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, and that was because of swelling. So again, it's terrifying, it's sad, it's tragic, it's traumatizing. But swelling can do a lot to a body. Like you just have to mm-hmm. take that into account too. Kendrick's father also said that evidence was intentionally destroyed at the Valdosta Crime Lab. He said that when he went to identify his son's body, that the temperature inside was extremely hot. And the drawer that his son's body was in was heated. And he, like he said, when they opened the drawer to let him see Kendrick to identify him, that he felt a, a gust of like warm air hit him. It was mm-hmm. not cold or cool. And it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. He said this was done in order to destroy evidence on his son's body. Lee touched in the family's representative from the NAACP, denied these allegations. She toured the crime lab and verified that there were appropriate alarms working in order to go off if the temperature rose too high. There were also emergency generators should there be a further emergency. So they do have things in place to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah. So I feel like, I don't know, I I think that they're trying to do whatever they can to get attention on this and get it reopened. And I completely understand that. but. Alleging things that are not true diminish your credibility. Yeah, that's going to get you a really, really bad kind of attention on the case. Right. And yeah, and that's what you don't want. You don't want people to stop believing when you say, 
hey, I found this or somebody said this to me, you know, like Mm -hmm. you want them to take that seriously. Yeah. Another piece of the investigation has been argued as being part of a cover-up is involving the school surveillance footage from the day of Kendrick's death. At the time, there were 59 cameras in and around the school. The camera footage was immediately downloaded and given to investigators on a hard drive. The footage was eventually made available to the Johnson family later that year. Okay, there are six different servers that these cameras feed to, but none of the servers' times matched up. They were all off on times. Mm -hmm. So if it's 12.50 on this one, it's 12.42 on this one, or one, you know, like, just none of it matched up. Well, yeah, and each server had its own clock, but they don't reflect the accurate time of day right? that they're saying it does. And apparently this is a surveillance camera thing. Like, how many cases have we seen, you know, there, most of the time it's like, oh, the camera didn't work or there wasn't a yeah. camera, like whatever. But if it does, it's like timestamp is off. Uh-huh. If it does, well, we don't know what actual time it is. We can kind of guess, but yeah, the, the clock never matched up, so I don't know. I swear, surveillance in any way when it comes to cameras, it, they're like that that thing where it's like you have one job and you can't even do that, right? Like, yeah, they literally serve one purpose and it's just become acceptable. What can you do about it? But it's like, it's just become kind of widely accepted that it's like, well, that doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> because you, you're never going to get it right. You're never going to get what you want or need out of it. Mm-mm. What is the point? Exactly. What is the point? And like, With how sophisticated our phones are now and our cameras and like all these things, why can we not just make video equipment that the time works? Mm -hmm. At least that. Like, I'm not even asking for... Not grainy footage. (laughs) Exactly. Like, I'm not even there yet. Can we just get it to effectively keep time? (laughs) Right. Right. I mean, like I just, my 1997 Nickelodeon clock keeps time pretty well. Exactly. It's possible, guys. Right. Do, we don't lack the technology. So what's happening? Like, exactly. I do not understand it. The Johnson family's attorney argued that due to these conflicting timestamps, there's no way to make sense of what they were watching. Despite these arguments, investigators and video technicians felt confident that they were able to piece together an ex an accurate timeline based on the cameras that they were certain had a correct timestamp, as well as the time that classes let out. So at 1.25 p.m., cameras show Kendrick walking down a school's hallway near the school's foreign language classrooms. He's carrying the yellow folder that was later found near his body. Another camera shows Kendrick at 1.27 p.m. opening the doors to the hallway that leads to the old gym. There is then footage that shows Kendrick entering the old gym at 1.09 p.m. However, this timestamp has been reported to be inaccurate and corrected to be at 1.28 p.m. There are then two motion sensing cameras that capture Kendrick inside of the old gym walking from the entrance towards the corner of the gym where the wrestling mats were stored. Kendrick smiles at one point in the video and doesn't appear to be following anyone. He's walking by himself and there's no sign of anyone following him. The Johnson family argued that there appeared to be missing chunks of time from the videos, particularly after he walks into the old gym. They raised the concern that it appears that people seem to disappear from frames suddenly. The attorney for the sheriff's department released a statement saying that the surveillance video in the old gym did not record video, but were motion detected and recorded still frames at the rate of one frame per second. And from what I understand, that's how most surveillance videos work. They're taking just stills over and over mm-hmm. and over and over. And that's, that might just be how video cameras work. I don't know, you know, because it's like, <laughs> it's like those little things that you like draw on the book and then you, and then you flip it and it shows movement. That's just drawing the same thing over and over and with a slight difference, with a slight and then- difference. And then you put it all together and it's motion. That's what that actually is. The cameras were activated when they detected a change in light. So this doesn't always happen when a person moves across the area. They deny that any of the footage had been altered. Another concern was if Kendrick did accidentally become lodged inside the wrestling mat, why would nobody hear him yelling for help? 
In a YouTube video, several people perform an experiment by having one person scoot into the center of a very similar wrestling mat. The mat's rolled up, turned on its side, and exactly how the mat Kendrick was found was. The person inside yells for help while struggling to free himself. You can almost not hear it at all. Like, it is very, very, it's very quiet. Um, and Well, it's muffled because... There's at that point probably six layers of mat around you. Exactly. Yeah. It's super, super muffled. This person cannot free themselves. They really can't do anything, but it's very, if the sound would be that muffled and this gym isn't the one that's in the most use, it's not like somebody walking in the hall outside the gym is going to hear him him yelling. Mm -hmm. You'd have to be in the gym and pretty much over at the mats and Even then, it's kind of a crapshoot if you'd hear it or not. Right. You know? So I understand. It seems like at a school with a bunch of people, somebody would hear him yelling for help. But like you said, you've got all those layers around you. It's it's kind of soundproofing. And he's in the middle of however many mats rolled up, too. Exactly. Yes, exactly. There's so many more mats around. Yeah. If that's what happened, right? If, If he slipped into it by himself on accident, tragic accident, and he just got stuck, it makes sense why no one could hear him cry for help, which is, oh, that's tragic all by itself. Yes, yes. After Lowndes County ended their investigation, the Johnsons continued their own investigation with the assistance of the NAACP and SCLC. Eventually, the SCLC and Lee Touchton of the NAACP came to the conclusion that the police department did, or the same conclusion. Kendrick's death was a tragic accident. Both Reverend Rose and Touchton said that there is reason to believe that the Johnson family's lawyers weren't entirely truthful about information they did or did not receive from law enforcement and school officials. The Johnson's attorney said that they believe that Kendrick was killed in another part of the school, then brought to the old gym, and that surveillance video will prove it. He said that the school and law enforcement were stonewalling them in their attempt to see the videos. The attorney from the Lowndes County Schools said that he has offered for the Johnson family to view the surveillance videos multiple times, but their lawyer has declined every offer. Touchton said that the family reported being stonewalled on multiple occasions about receiving documents and information from law enforcement and the school when she personally had received the documents. Touchton eventually resigned from the NAACP due to what she reported were matters of conscience regarding the investigation. Both Touchton and Reverend Rose felt the continued accusations of a cover-up were unfounded. In April of 2021, Jackie Johnson brought forth a recording that she had purchased for $1,000 from an anonymous tipster. This recording is the voice of an assumed Caucasian male confessing to be involved in the murder of Kendrick Johnson. The recording says, quote, they're going to catch me anyways. Should have never done that. I was stupid. I was young and stupid, man. Kendrick didn't deserve that. They're going to catch me. The case investigating Kendrick's mysterious death has been reopened by Valdosta police. Yeah, and they said that there's 17 boxes of evidence. Did you watch that? I watched a few interviews with the family's spokesperson. His name is, I don't remember his last name, Marcus something. Mm -hmm. Excellent teeth. I mean, great smile. Like, yeah, man, beautiful teeth. But he's like, you know, we're, we feel like, you know, those 17 boxes of evidence represent the 17 years of Kendrick's life and that we're really going to get somewhere. And this new sheriff has been very adamant about getting all this information from the federal investigators and all this stuff and reopening this case. So I think that's great. I think that it should be reopened. I think that it, because just things were not done. Mm -hmm. I mean, not even wearing the protective booties in a fucking crime scene. Right. I mean, that's just shooting all over the crime scene and being incredibly disrespectful to the crime itself. Yeah. Yeah, to Kendrick. Yes. I hope, hope, hope that something comes of it because there's so much that nobody knows or that we're not being told or that nothing, you know, things weren't investigated. So I hope that something good and productive comes from this. Mm -hmm. But at this point, we just can't know what we don't know. Right. So, yeah. And I mean, hopefully they will, you know, find something that somebody missed in there. I mean, obviously, like, uh, there are just so many weird things, like the blood all over the wall. 
I know, and they never tested it. They were like, that doesn't concern us. Yeah, well, they they said it just wasn't, they tested it for ki- to match oh, Kendrick's right. blood, and it didn't. So they were just like, eh, whatever. But yeah, it's like, and then they said, well, that blood looks older. First of all, there's no way to tell how long blood has ever been anywhere. Mm-mm. That's just not a thing. 21 hours, that's enough time for blood to dry. Exactly. Yeah, you can tell if it's dry or wet, basically, and that's about it. But you can't look at something and say, you know, like if somebody came over here and I had a bloody nose one day and had gotten like, you know, I don't know, there was a drop of blood somewhere on the wall or something crazy. And then Mm -hmm. something happens to me, right? I go missing, can't find my body. And the police say, well, there's blood here. She must have been killed in the house. Like, well, we don't know. Is that blood from the day she went missing? Or is it from any other time because she lives in this house, like. Right, exactly. You know, I mean, accidents happen, people. I think, firstly, if we are looking at an accidental tragic death, the school needs to pay for allowing children. Yes. To use those mats as lockers. Yes. And then jamming them into a huge pile or like a group and then being like, well, good luck, find your shoes. Mm Mm-hmm. That yeah. should never have happened. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Even if it is an accident, there's a lot of problems here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think that, that I mean, something needs to change. If that's what kids are having to do because they can't afford lockers, right? that is wildly inappropriate and so obviously dangerous. Right. Now, I've seen some people who have kind of posted or shared this story and been like, how was this child wrapped up in a mat? I would be interested to know when the other mats were put there Mm -hmm. because does that line up with the time that he, like, you know, with the timeline of him having been put into the mat or having fallen into the mat? Because if he was put in the mat, rolled up and put there, but the other mats surrounding it had already been there, how do you do that? You don't have a crane. It's not a claw machine. You can't just drop it in. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, and like the blood being on the wall or whatever and the police just being like, well, that's totally unrelated, which how do you fucking know that? Like, you mean to tell, because they're like, it's old blood. You mean to tell me that the school janitor, whoever's responsible for cleaning, yeah, they keep their job by leaving blood all over the walls? Right. (laughs) Like, whoever cleaned that night, whatever day that happened, that shit should have been gone the very next day. Well, and my God, I mean, this is coming off of a huge break for them. Yeah, that shit should have been very clean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so there, there's no way. I just, I don't think, okay, and if it doesn't belong to Kendrick, who does it belong is it? to? Yeah. Because Who's that person could be a person you need to talk to about this because there was also the sweatshirt and the other shoe nearby mm-hmm. that they, they did that not collect or test. And nope. both appeared to have blood on them. Right. I am kind of interested to understand how there was blood underneath the shoe. Are they saying that while he was suspended in this mat and was bleeding from his nose that then the shoe fell on top of it because there was no blood on top of the shoe. Exactly. And there's, it's like a white and black shoe and the white yes. areas are pristine. Oh, yes. It's, um, I don't know what kind of shoe it is, but yeah, there are like two stripes. It looks like all along kind of the top from the toe to the back of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's, I mean, it's very, very clean. Yeah. So how did that happen? I have heard, and I don't know, I mean, we didn't discuss it, but I have heard from watching different videos that when he was found in the mat, his arms were pinned kind of behind him. Yes. So yeah, that was the other thing. Cause it's like, imagine like putting your hands at your side and then diving head first with your hands still down at your side. Why would you do that if you were reaching, reaching for, something for something Yeah, inside of the map? His arms are not. And I don't think that once he, if he dove in and for some reason, you know, he's got his arms out and he dives in, I don't see him being able to move his arms to bring them back up that way. There, I don't, there's not enough room in there for you to make any major maneuvers, you know, changes of position. Right. And then what was what would have been the end game for that anyway had he been able to do that? To put his arms, his hands up at the top and then push himself back out? Like, I don't know. 
Yeah, it seemed like you want your hands in front of you because if you could touch the floor, maybe you could get some leverage. Yeah, or even on the sides of the mat and kind of like push yourself out, you Uh know, kind of like wiggle yourself out. Yeah. The whole thing is, this was a very precarious situation to put children into. Yes. And allow them to do this. Yeah, and there's absolutely no reason for it. No. To grab shoes. (laughs) Right, yeah. Yeah. What do you think about like a jawbreaker situation? See, that's honestly what I was thinking where it was kind of like, you mean an accidental death, maybe not the way that they said it was, but then they were, he was put there to be like, whoops, this was an accident. Yeah. Hey, it would be funny to stick him in there and we'll come get him after our class. We come back. Oh, fuck. I did not know somebody could die from that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about that because, I mean, there that is one of the rumors or rumors. I don't know if that's the right word, but um, theories is that it was kind of a prank. They were going to play on him. Hey, let's shove him in there. Mm-hmm. And then it got wildly out of hand. And Which you would hope that people would come forward and admit that because right. if you don't, you're a piece of shit. Like, I get it. You didn't mean for him to die if that's the situation. It's a stupid prank, but... I mean, the family needs closure. Like, and I know you don't want to get in trouble, but you know, something has to be done. Like, sorry. Yeah. But I don't think that he accidentally fell in. Mm -hmm. That just seems absolutely ridiculous. And he, they've been using those mats for how long? Mm -hmm. I don't know that he's going to do anything to make it so that he can't come back out. Like, he, they knew how to get what they needed to get. Like, yeah, I don't know. So it just seems like he wouldn't put himself in a situation that was going to be that dangerous. And it would be hard to get down into the mat in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of have to like shimmy in because it's a tight squeeze there. Yeah. So it just seems like you're not going to squeeze yourself into something that tight with no way to get out. Yeah. And just hope, hope that you're going to come back out of it. Like that doesn't seem like anybody would make that call and be like, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, but the other thing though, like people saying that it's a cover-up and all this stuff, I, I, my mind can't go there either because I know. you've got the coroner that would have had to participate, the uh, sh- everybody at the sheriff's department, the FBI, like the school officials, everybody. While the investigation was not done well, they are offering up all of the information that they have. Yeah. So there's that. I mean, the people who are working with the Johnsons, and I'm not in any way blaming the Johnsons or saying, I I get where they're coming from. I understand it 100%. I would probably be doing the same thing. I can't say that, you know, I can't say what I would do or not do, but I'm not coming from a place of being like, oh, look at what what they're doing wrong. But the NAACP and the, oh my gosh, was it LC? SCLC. SCLC. They both have kind of pulled out of it because they've seen some untruths that have come out about it. Yes. Yeah. And that's a problem. I mean, they, you know, like we said, you don't want to diminish your credibility when you want people to investigate your child's, you know, what you believe is a murder. And and there have been things that unfortunately they have just straight made up. And these are things that can be fact-checked and people have, you know, distanced themselves from that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just doesn't bode well or look good when you have people being like, "Uh uh-uh. Right. I'm not in your corner anymore. I mean, I would say I'm in the corner of truth. I think it needs to be investigated. I think we need to find at least some more answers. I think the family deserves closure. Absolutely. And I think Kendrick's memory deserves closure. And if yes. it is, if it does turn out that he really did dive in there, which I don't think is what it happened, but if it is, then like you said, we need, either way, we need the school to make some changes. Kids should not be using wrestling mats as lockers anyway. Because no. if it is, especially if this is what happened and it's an accident, obviously that's dangerous. So figure well, something and- else out. Yeah, exactly. And there's no no teacher, no authority figure around making sure, like policing this to see, is everybody okay? They're just like, well, go get your shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, irresponsible. Very. Yeah. So I agree with you. I mean, I think that it needs to be 100% investigated. I'm glad that it's being reopened. I think that things need to be looked at and continue to look at, be looked at until we come to 
a conclusion that provides closure for the family and also makes sense. But right now, it just doesn't make sense. Right. Not at all. Mm -mm. Ugh. Well, we would love to hear what you guys think. Yeah, we want to hear what you guys think. This is a crazy case. Just so many different facets, you know, that are involved in it. Um, Please always remember that we're all different people. We're going to come at things with different perceptions, different experiences, different perspectives, different mindsets, all yeah, things. different opinions. So we encourage like discussion about cases, but, but we do not agree with arguing or berating or yeah, none bashing of that. people for yeah. it. No, no. So, and I think our, our listeners are amazing about that. You know, I've yes. seen so many interactions of just like, okay, that's a good point, but here's what I think, you know, just like, yeah, really open and respectful of each other. So we just want to remind everybody to always be respectful uh, when discussing a case with somebody else, especially on our platform where we will delete your mean ass comment. Yeah, I mean, let's let's encourage intellectual and positive debates and no attacks. Exactly, love it. Yes. Well, thank you so much for listening and we will hopefully catch you on the next episode. Yeah. And um, otherwise, we'll see you on the live. Yes. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys, before we are done for the day, you know what we've got? We've got some new patrons to thank. Yes. So thank you so much to Sarah, Madeline Larson, Binky G, Amber Sloan, Casey Grillmeyer, Alyssa Kelly, Kelly Geilner, Karen Krantz, Keenan Derman, Jennifer Thomas, Summer Snyder, Michelle Egan, Sandy Taylor, Janin Otero, Janine, sorry, Rochelle DSO, Dan Wareham, Amanda, Joan Westenberg, Kelly, Emily, Lexi Kunstman, Cheyenne Crossett, Tina Salter, Stephanie Delgadillo, Massily, Marissa Newell, Catherine Creston Duval, Sarah Klein, Carly Frenette, Heidi Benzer, and Maddie Fontenot. Oh my God, we love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Yes, we love you. Bye. Bye. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this case. Connect with us on Instagram or Facebook to continue the conversation. Thanks for listening and we will meet you back here next week. Bye. The theme song for the show is created and composed by Stephen Toby. You can find more of Stephen's work on SoundCloud. Our logo was created by Sloan Williams of Sophisticated Crayon. You can find more of her work on Etsy. Visit us at killerqueenspodcast.com for merch and other info about the show. 